Sorry, you've been highlighting that uh, what Gary Russell is doing. He's trying to force Al Heyman to uh, deliver him Leo Santa Cruz, and now he's using Eddie Hearn for leverage. He put deal exactly what Deontay Wilder did to get that $20 million out of CBS Showtime, and he's smart. He followed the Wilder blueprint, and he said, you know what? I'm a free agent. You know, I, I ain't got no long-term deal with Al Heyman or PBC, or I don't have no manager or, or, or advisor I'm locked into. I can do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? You know? And come, hey, man, keep offering me. He said a lot of people been offering too, but I peaked this game, though. I peaked this game from across the street. Matter of fact, I peaked this game from Detroit all the way to D and the DMV. But let's talk about it. We back, Goodfellas Sports TV. We're in the building. Appreciate everybody for showing love. Make sure you jab that subscribe button, hit the bell icon button. We'll miss another video. We up in here, right? And um, pretty much what Gary Russell was doing is trying to force um, – Al Hammond to deliver Leo Santa Cruz, trying to act like he going to chop it up with uh, Eddie Hearn. You know what? Uh, it's going to be up to Al Hammond to call this bluff. You know, I'm going to link an interview he did at with Laugh at First Sight, man. I'm going to link that in the description. Hit the subscribe button. He got some really good interviews. Um, and he basically he basically came clean like, you know what, man? I just I met with Eddie Hearn, but I ain't got no ill will or no bad blood with Al. Basically, I want to be with PBC. I just want him to, to give me the fight that I want. And that's Leo Santa Cruz. And it's sad when when it when it has to come with one of the fighters want to uh, bluffing like they're going to leave PBC uh, just for Al Heyman to deliver the fight. He said Al got the power to make the fight happen. So pretty much what he's saying is that Al Heyman is the one that's holding up these fights. That's what he's saying. Because if Al Heyman got the power to deliver Leo Santa Cruz, then should he got the power to deliver Keith Thurman and Errol Spence? He got the power... To, to deliver Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. So a lot of this shit, once you kind of put the pieces to the puzzle, um, and you kind of, you know, you know, put all the all the shit together, a lot of this is falling on PBC. And I've been telling you dudes this for a while, that PBC been looking a little bit light in the ass. A lot of dudes don't want to believe me, dog, when I tell y'all that the PBC fighters are some of the ones that's holding up a lot of these fights, man. You know, these dudes are getting bad advice, and you know what's the one constant and every one of these PBC dudes holding up fights is Al Heyman. You know, at the end of the day, it's Al Heyman that's holding up these fucking fights. And Gary Russell is just tripling down on what I already know. Fuck double down, doubling down. He's tripling down. And he got to go to a catastrophic point where, like, dude, I will leave you and I'll go sign to your mortal enemy, the fucking uh, Eddie Hearn. I'll go over to Matchroom USA just like y'all left lost Devin Haney over there. Just like y'all lost Jaime Maguire, Triple G, like and Danny Jacobs and Jesse, uh, every guy they tried to court over at PBC and and Gary Russell is holding his nuts on Alan Heyman. Like, what you gonna do? You gonna give me this Leo Santa Cruz fight? And he sounded like he optimistic that Al can deliver. He said Al has kept every promise that he that he gave him in his career, and this the only one that he looking shaky on. And if Al Heyman, like I said, if Al Heyman is willing to let Gary Russell walk. To protect sorry ass Leo Santa Cruz, he act like Leo Santa Cruz is Canelo. I I, I will understand that. If 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 Al Heyman wanted to keep a money a money vacuum in like Canelo, and he willing to sacrifice a brother, because I already know Al Heyman is ain't as pro black as y'all if people make him seem to be. A lot of people hate Premier Boxing Champion off the strength because they think it's pro black. They think it's black, but if we, if you really look at it. And, and you just stop being judgmental from the outside looking in. He getting Mexicans pay. He getting Ukrainians pay. He getting Eastern Europeans. He getting UK dudes pay. He getting everybody paid. And and he and, and he's he's sacrificed. You know he sacrificed. You know several brothers over there. You know for the betterment of of of, of, of a Mexican fighter. You know, and, and and that's just what it is. You know, if he wouldn't like Leo Santa Cruz, ain't even raking in the bread like that. That's where I, that's where that's where I'm tripping at. Like, he ain't even raking in the bread. Like, if anything, he more closer to his his exit. He ain't no pay per view fighter. Never could, never would be. You know, if I'm Gary Russ, I'm like, I need an answer now. I ain't trying to wait for this this clown to fight. Let me know now if you and I I pull up on Leo Santa Cruz. Like, if you gonna fight me or not, bro? This is private conversation. You know, I ain't going to unveil nothing. Oh, no, you're not going to move up and fight Tank Davis. All right, then I'm gone. I'm fucking gone. And, you know, and I can tell Al, I appreciate it. Much love for you. But you know what? I got to get this money. This guaranteed money. They're going to keep me active. You know what? 
I'm going to exercise my option versus McGill Burchett. I'm going to try to uh, get that order. I'm going to try to get that order. And if Eddie win a purse, but if he don't, I'll go over to ESPN to beat his ass. And then I unify with Tevin Farmer. And then I'll try to get Lomachenko uh, when he's ready to come back down. And then I'll be done with my career. You know, and that's just what it is. And if, you know, Al Heyman is wouldn't like Gary Russell Walk, so what? So what? That just lets you know that he picked Leo Santa Cruz and Javante Tank Davis over Gary Russell. And nobody going to bat an eye. Ain't no black people uh, building no wall or, or self-defense for Gary Russell. That's the last dude they talk about. The last dude they talk about. You know, they, they, they harp on Canelo so much and he this and that and he won't fight Charlo. They hop on Triple G. He won't fight Charlo. And, you know, they go on and on about about other fighters and shit, and they give, you know, all these dudes super support, but ain't nobody put their neck on the line for Gary Russell, and that's why I say it ain't about being pro-black, you know, these quote-unquote boss communities. It's not about being pro-black. It's about being pro-selective into who they like, okay? It's about who they like. It's about where they from. You know, it's like, te- I'm they from Texas, then shit, they gonna give the, mo- the most promotion, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about dudes from the DMV. It's not a black movement. And a lot of dudes that they come in here and say, "Oh, you know, this is they these these dudes are race better." No, they're not. They're not race betters. They pro who they like. Because if it was a pro black movement, Gary Russell should should have one of the biggest pushes behind him. He want to fight the best. He check all the boxes off. He black. He want to fight the best. He got an opportunity to be the Mexican, just like the Char- Jamal Charlo got an opportunity to be Canelo. It's a fight that everybody want to see. But it ain't about that, bro. If Gary Russell was from Texas, you know, he had the biggest push behind him. And, and that's the actual fact right there. But if I'm that brother, dog, I need to answer. I need to answer. I need to answer. I need to answer by like the June, in the middle of June or the end of June. Matter of fact, I say I need to answer by, by the 4th of July. And if I can't get an answer by the 4th of July, I'm gone. I'm gone. That, that's some sucker shit, man. And we'll see what Al do. You know, Al might sit down with Leo Santa Cruz, and I guarantee you he overcompensate him to fight Gary Russell. But he's going to fight Javante Tank Davis. Like, nigga, you got a better chance of beating Gary, Ru- I mean, beating Gary Russell than you do Tank. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get your ass with fighting Tank regardless. You get your ass with regardless. The Tank Davis shit is just going to be quick, fast. It's gonna, you're going to get clapped, and you're going to keep it moving. But if it's a fighter in this generation that I, I dislike the most, and if it, it came, if I had to use the adjective of hate, it's Leo Santa Cruz. Now, he he's by far the scum of the earth. He is the most bummiest, scariest mofo on the, pro, on, on, on the fucking uh, planet, bro. If he, if he never existed in boxing, it would never matter to me. I would hope he never existed. I hope somebody knock his head off his fuck, fucking shoulder in a brutality or a fatality. It would make me no difference. If he if they if he woke up and he didn't exist, or he woke up a retired dude, I throw a retirement party for him, because he he's very indicative of the pussy the pussy pussyfication. Yeah, I made a word pussyfication of boxing. If you everything about this era, if I had to get one figurehead for this era, have one poster child for this pussyfication of boxing, it would be Leo Santa Cruz. You know what I'm saying? He's the pussyfication. I mean, he's the total package. He dug rigging down for years. He was he spearheaded that. He fought Carl Frampton, you know, and Frampton gave him a rematch. He lost, and then he refused to fight Carl Frampton over in uh, fucking Ireland when Carl Frampton fought him in his hometown for a rematch when he didn't have to. Pussy. He sit here and he bum bash more. He fight part time construction workers, you know, uh, brick masons. Like, dude, it is just a hundred percent terrible, bro. He rematched Abner Maras like somebody wanted to see that. Then he had to tune up in between the rematch like, oh, my God. I can't stand that dude. That dude is by far the, my least favorite boxer of this generation. It ain't even close. It ain't even close. I put him above pair defenders. Real talk. I put him behind, uh, above pair defenders. And guys that stuff they glove or uh, pad they, uh, pad they wraps. You catch my drift, but hey, it's a good fella, Sports TV. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if need be. Or hit me up on social media. All those links in the description. You want to make a donation, that link's in the description. Best donation you can make is share, share the video. I'll link the interview in the description. You got with Laugh at First Sight on the source link in the description. Check it out. 
Let me know what you guys think about the video. Goodfellas Sports TV. One time for the one time. We gone.